Andre's tone and uh, uh, really jumps out at you even when you read the script. And um, I, I always uh, like the way that Andre shoots and he edits in his head while he's shooting and he knows what he wants. And you can see that even in his writing. And it, it really is a pleasure to work with someone that can, can bring all that to light even before you hop in front of the camera. Uh, when I first read it, of course, I, 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 I just thought, what an incredibly fun character to play. And um, so, of course, I read it as any actor would. It's like, uh, Harold, 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 Harold. Oh, great. Oh, then these other guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, but upon going back <laughs> and reading the rest of it, uh, I was just I was just so taken with the story and just the plight, not only of, of Ron's character, but of, of Jelani's character. I mean, everybody in this in this movie uh, goes through such an enormous arc, and yet they're they're so strong, and they're so committed to their own beliefs that you know they come they 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 come out okay unless of course it's 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 Ron and I, but I'm not gonna go into that. I just I, I I'm so nervous about spoiling. No, spoiler no <laughs> alerts. <laughs> um, I was, I was just, um, I was so taken with his script and so taken with his writing and the the, the intelligence of it, mm -hmm. and then to to hear uh, Jelani do the, the the car talk stuff, the stuff in the car. Um, I mean, to me, that not only not only is it a testament to the great script, but just the way. J Jelani and and Aku do the, the do that stuff. It's like this is seamless and just brilliant. Um, as you know, and as as Ron was saying, the the early drafts that we saw of the screenplay, I just thought was amazing. You know, and and of course the script went through a lot of different changes. And uh, you know, as Jeffrey was saying, it was it was just great. One thing that I really appreciate about Andre's style of filmmaking is that he um, it's to me in, in my view it's noir but he hybridizes a lot of other genres along with that so for, for myself as I was reading the screenplay just hearing at least in my mind how everything was going to play out um, Andre's filmmaking style for me is reminiscent of creators such as, you know, Ross Serling and, and Hitchcock and Kubrick and, and, and Orson Welles and, you know, a lot of these type of filmmakers that I know myself, I really enjoy watching. Um, so I just, I just thought it was awesome. I knew we were going to have a great time, you know, collaboratively working on this and creating this and bringing something that was going to be, uh, you know, really special for all the viewers and watching it. Right. You know, I know that he's a big animal lover and, and you know, things like this. Um, so, yeah. you know, having a story about at least my character, Jay, and this, this connection to this dog and his mother and mm -hmm. how he correlates that with everything that he goes through in his experiences because, uh, you know, he he views himself as the the response to environmental impermanence, you know. So, um, you know, he kind of views the way that he sees everything as the way that it should be, the way that it is, you know. And although he is his only religion is probably evolution and adaption, he's very rigid in how he he sees things. What was it for you reading the script and bringing it to the screen that you thought was important as an actor that you had to get across? Well, for me, for me, it was uh, definitely you know you want to you, you want to play Pete as the everyman, but at the same time you want to give him a little bit of an edge, and uh, his edge comes from really being caught up in not 
he prefers to move away from revenge at this point in his life now that he's started back up with his daughter and his daughter's going to get married and all this. And, and he just keeps getting pulled back in to the revenge aspect of his life and the anger. Um, so to give that, give that essence of uh, being stuck in that situation and wanting to get out, but just keep being pulled back in. And it's going on even with, you know, just getting kicked out of your apartment. You know, you have no control. And uh, 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 the only control you have in the end is to just, you have to succumb yeah. in the end. And unfortunately. Uh, let me just say, uh, I think that Harold, um, Harold gives people opportunities to do things, and uh, by by funding them as a venture capitalist, he gives them the opportunity to to grow their business and to to realize their dreams. I think, uh, in his own twisted way, he gives people the opportunity to see the error of their ways, and if they can't see that then he feels it's incumbent upon himself to mete out the justice that he feels that they deserve. <laughs> a lot of folks think like that today. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It's just a lot of them don't, yeah, don't uh, deliver that, that, that blow of justice with a brass knuckle. That's his, that's his, <laughs> that's his choice of gavel in the court of Harold. <laughs> you know, I think with Jay, Jay probably could have been the next Claude Monet, the next Picasso, the next Jean-Michel Basquiat, the next Keith Haring, you know? Um, yeah he views himself as like this voice of the omniverse, you know, and because things don't always work out as, you know, we may intend or, you know, idealistically plan out sometimes, we respond to it in ways of, um, you know, just acting out of fear. So, you know, although Jay is very battle hardened, he's really, He's really in fear of a lot of things. And that's kind of how I looked at all of the different characters. Uh, you know, they're all just emotionally responding to their own fear. And, you know, because they're not really going inward as individuals, uh, you know, they keep making decisions that, you know, just have them moving in a, in a cyclical fashion as opposed to really moving forward in their lives. So, you know, that's, that's how I always saw the character of Jay and that's how I wanted to portray him, you know, on, on camera. Well, I like that because you made a good point. We all do that. You know, we walk kind of walk through life and things happen, but we don't think about the things. And I think that's why this, I liked it because the characters, everybody can find something in that character about themselves. They may not want to recognize it, but they can find it. And I think that's a testament to you guys as actors because that's what we look for when we watch something. We want to walk away and have conversation. I would want them to be entertained. And I, I think that it is entertaining on so many levels. It's, it's deep, it's gory, it's, but it's funny and it's touching. So I, I think that the, that sort of all-encompassing entertainment is what I hope people get from it. And I think that they'll get that best if they see it twice and then they see it again. <laughs> yes, because there are things you miss and you go back and you go, oh, wait, I didn't see that. And oh, that's what that meant. So mm -hmm. you're right. You do have to go in again and peel another layer off the film. Good. As my, as my sister says, disrupted hashtag see it twice <laughs> <laughs> and she really when she saw it the second time that was when she really you know talked to me and said i can't believe how much i missed the first time but what i, I what i also hope people take away from and i know that he's not here today and i know you had questions for him 
I want people to take away. This is, this is Andre Welsh's first feature film written, directed, held the camera, held the microphone. The kid is insanely talented. And what I want them to take away from this movie is um, let's get this kid making more movies because uh, it, he really delivered on his first script and his first vision. And it, 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 his talent is something that needs to be nurtured and uh, uh, let loose in the wild. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I would definitely hope that anyone watching would take away is to, um, you know, as we move forward, especially when we look at everything that's been transpiring, you know, not just in this last calendar year and in all the years prior, but I really think that it's time that, you know, we really start to examine ourselves and, you know, maybe start to transcend some of these social constraints and, you know, how we are looking at everything based on uh, social engineering and how things have been classified for us. Yes. You know, one, one thing about the character of Jay and, and uh, you know, is that, you know, and I don't want to spoil anything later, but um, there, there's a conversation that he has with uh, his cousin later on in the film where, you know, they're talking about stereotypes about race. You know, and I think that, um, you know, I just think that we're in a, a day and age where we have to look at these things and remove ourselves from these racial classifications. Uh, we have to get away from bickering about things about, you know, gender and class and, you know, politics and just all these things that you know, when we were little ones, when we were born, you know, we weren't thinking about these things. We're all playing around in sandboxes. We weren't thinking about these things. There was no parameters to uh, how far we could see within the dimension and, and travel to these things if we wanted to achieve and accomplish them. So, you know, I, I would just like for everyone to have a little bit more empathy, you know, uh, with everyone. What did, on a craft level for you as an actor that you took away doing Disrupted? For me, it was stillness. And I think that that, that Andre gave me that opportunity to be, uh, to be, to be small and to be uh, thoughtful and to go inward. And um, uh, because so often, and as Ron can attest, Theater actors are all about projecting to the back row. And to have someone as, as sympathetic and as smart and as caring as Andre is behind the camera, uh, he was able to just to like bring me down and, and, and just get me to that moment that is between here and the lens. And that is is i was very thankful for that and that is a true gift that uh, uh in working with andre um i've just little things i mean i i tend to bob my head and i go hey andre if you see me bobbing my head tell me to stop you know and he will too um but i just want to go on the heels of what jelani said earlier and what i the the you want to see the beauty of this film in one little scene? Watch the very first scene. Sets the whole tone for the movie, gives you everything that Jelani was talking about, and it pulls you through all those emotions. It's, uh, it, you know, and boy, we got Jen Tripp, who was in that scene with Jelani in the very first scene. Um, played it perfectly and was directed perfectly. Uh, again, Andre just, even though you give him 49 takes usually, minimum, uh, he knows why he wants to take it again because he wants to have the options. And boy, that whole first scene just, that's the movie in a nutshell to me.
the tone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for myself, one thing that, um, you know, I really appreciated working on this project was always remembering to listen, you know, become a more effective listener. And, uh, you know, I can truly say that, you know, working with everyone, with, with Jeffrey, with Ron, uh, with Jen Tripp is, you know, he just mentioned who did an amazing job and, and everyone, whether we were in front of the camera or behind the camera, I'm always listening. And uh, I always just want to become a better listener so that I can apply that to the actual performance. Mm -hmm.